surrounding me and if I breathe he would come and devour me oh but I speak the name oh I speak the name Yes, I speak his name, such a wonderful name. Jesus, there's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus.
together. What a beautiful presence of the Lord is in this place. Can we just lift a hand one more time and love Jesus? There's something about that name. God, we love your presence. We love your power. We love your anointing that's in this place. Thank you, Lord, for your touch. Thank you for receiving our worship today. Thank you for inhabiting our praise. We bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. That's better. Amen. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. For our kids, it's a good day because we have classes tonight. So I know you'll be excited about that. For all of those three to five-year-olds, I almost messed that up, but I did not. That's the right number. Three to five-year-olds will go right back into room 104. Don is heading back there to meet you. For the six to nine-year-olds, you'll go in room 103. You can go ahead and start moving right now. That's a perfect time to do it. 
And then for our 10 to 12 year olds, you're going to be in the old foyer. So if you go right through the double doors and head that way and everyone watching online, you're also in for a special treat because Bishop Coleman's going to be ministering the word of the Lord to us tonight, but he's also going to be leading us in this next worship course. So we want Bishop to come right now and they're going to sing a little bit. Then he's going to preach a little bit and we're going to have an awesome time. God bless you tonight.
tonight. Praise God. Let's lift our hands and worship the Lord together. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thankful folks for singing them beautiful songs. Let's bow our heads and pray about the message. And we can, Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for your word. We pray that you'll speak to our hearts, teach us, lead us, guide us. We know, God, you've got many more things for us, and we just want to come by and collect them, Lord. Touch every heart that's here tonight. If anybody doesn't know you, Lord, deal with their hearts this evening. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, and thank you, choir, and thank you, church. You may be seated. So glad to be in your presence tonight and uh, have a few things to leave with you. Not a fast and furious preaching message tonight. It's Bible study, I guess. Some people like Bible study better than preaching. <laughs> Preacher goes slow enough, you can hear what he's saying. First Corinthians, if you want to turn to it, because I've got, got a bunch of scriptures I want to throw out here to you. First Corinthians 2, the Apostle Paul said, Now... Now, he started his sentence with now, so I think he wants us to stop and listen. And when you're reading your Bible, watch for words that get your attention. And in this study tonight, there are several of them that got my attention. Now, we have received. So right away, he starts off telling us about something, and since only chapter 2, he's got some things that that we've received. Evidently, he received it, and the church he pastored received it. And when he wrote this down for us, he wants us to receive it. Now we have received it. Some, everybody's not ready to receive it now. If I could take a, a, a survey, probably some of you aren't quite ready to receive it. <laughs> but you will. You, you, you'll wonder, wonder what in the world I'm talking about. So now, he said, now we have received something. If you go to Pentecostal church and don't receive something, something's wrong. <laughs> Every Pentecostal church ought to have something for people to receive. And he's telling us, now we have received not the spirit of the world. Don't get this mixed up with what's in the world. You know, people come in out of the world and they see us singing and clapping our hands and stomping our feet and they don't know about what we're trying to learn how to dance. <laughs> but Paul was teaching us about spiritual things here. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. He wants to stop you right, right there. Don't, don't think we've, we're think, talking about the spirit of the world. But we're talking about the spirit which is of God. That's the one you want to get close to. That's the one you want to learn about. And the, the Spirit, which is of God, that we might know. If you get that Spirit, you're going to start knowing something about God. Everybody doesn't receive the Holy Ghost right away, and they have to pray for it a while. And, but, but they know a little bit more about what we're talking about when they receive it that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. It's wonderful that a stranger can come in out from outside, sit down in a Pentecostal church, get under conviction, run to the altar, and the Spirit of God to get on him. The Spirit of God to touch him that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. He didn't charge us for it, didn't, didn't make us become perfect for it, but he did clean us up. And Paul said, we own those things. Now, when you come into the church and you, you just have that experience, 
You come in empty and you go out owning something in another world. In verse 14, he said, but the natural man, oh, he's going to put some, something on this. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. That's the flesh. The man that doesn't want to be spiritual, doesn't want to acknowledge he has a spirit that needs help. No, the natural man, that's who we're talking now. Talking about the natural man. He receives not the things of the Spirit of God, so he's gone as far as he'll go. And neither can he know them. So he came into the, come into the church. Maybe this was the buddy with him, because this one guy, he, he seemed like he got into it. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, and, and he can't know them. Why, why can't he have it? Because they are spiritually discerned. It's a spiritual thing. He can't know them because they're spiritually discerned. And the writer starts off in another book now. Same subject. He said, we have tasted the heavenly gift. Do you ever sit down and talk about how you've tasted the Holy Ghost? How that gift is poured upon you and in you and what it makes you feel like and not just feel like but be like? The Holy Ghost changes people. The Holy Ghost, if you're having trouble changing in church, get full of the Holy Ghost. It's a changer. The Holy Ghost is a changer. And he said, we, we're partakers of the Holy Ghost, and we have tasted the good word of God. People that have never been around church, they don't know how wonderful the word is. But we in the church, we know because we've tasted it. That spiritual appetite got hold of us. And the Word of God satisfies that. And the powers of the world to come. Now that's getting deeper. There's some powers coming to this world from the other world. We can't see it. We'll never see it in this lifetime. And the powers of the world to come. So when we're born again... We experience, and this I find very interesting, when you're born again, you experience something from another world. Now, you can't get there with an airplane, but it's still another world. You can't get there on a rocket. There's no way to get there except through Jesus, and he's got this new world for you. We've tasted that heaven. It's a heavenly gift, and we've become partakers of the Holy Ghost, and we're born again. Now, does being born again scare you away? Some people don't like to hear that. People in the world. But we experience things from out of, the, out of this world when we experience the, the new birth. And the writer in Acts takes it up again. He said, ye shall receive power. Now, that sounds interesting. A lot of people want to have some power. And they don't know what kind of power it is when it's, if they first come in contact with it. It's, it's something that's about church. But in this church, you can receive power. Power's all over this building. <laughs> you should have seen these workers on, working outside. I believe the, the power of God was helping them. You shall receive power if you come in here. And after the Holy Ghost has come on you, that is the spiritual energies of the world to come. And it's getting more mysterious now. There's some energies in the world to come that we're going to have. Uh, it has to be talking about heaven, or else would we get that kind of power? We, we, we've come in contact with spiritual energies of the world to come. And we as individuals operate on energy from the world to come. If you're going to operate in this kingdom, you need to get some of this power from the world to come. See, just, just any power doesn't work. You can't get this in college. You can't get this in school. You can't, you can't join some cult and get this. You've got to get Jesus to get this. He's the Holy Ghost baptizer. He's the Holy Ghost baptizer. So we as individuals operate on energy from the world to come, and this is a new kind of power. Now, that's, that's 
easy to understand there. Since we don't know what it is, it's, 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 it's a new power. And we might get, might get plugged into it and get, get some of that. People might think like that. But uh, the, the spiritual energies of the world to come, somehow that world that's coming, which the church is going to, it's full of energy. And he said, we as individuals operate on energy from that world. This is a new kind of power. It's not earthly, it's not mental, it's not physical, it's, it is spiritual. The spirit is participating in order to have this. The body can't use this one. It's the spirit that has to have it. God's spirit, he pours his spirit upon us. When they first got the Holy Ghost, that was a new experience for all that, that whole crowd. And he just swept them away with a. Holy Ghost. Everybody had the Holy Ghost. That's wonderful. Wonderful to go into a building and suddenly everybody got the Holy Ghost. That can happen here. Again, I mean, everybody here's got the Holy Ghost. But the wonderful things that God does for us and doesn't charge us for it, that's wonderful. It's a new kind of power, and it's not earthly, it's not mental, it's not physical, it is spirit. So you, you enter into a world that has to deal with spirit things, things that you can't see but you, and you can't even feel them. I, I don't feel any spirit at all here with this. But when that spirit starts coming in here and in here, you begin to feel it all the way down to your feet. That's the kind of spirit. It, it's a different kind of spirit. It's called the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Don't let the word ghost scare you. This Holy Ghost just lifts you up and builds you up. It, it's a wonderful thing that goes, goes on with people. So we as individuals operate on energy from the world to come. So will there ever be a shortage of that? Not, not from the world to come, there won't. The only one would be short of it is somebody didn't pick up enough of it. <laughs> This is a new kind of power. It's not earthly. It's not mental. It's not physical. It's spiritual. And that's God's spirit. And it's from heaven. God's heaven. And far beyond the planets and stars of heaven. That's the spirit we've got that's right here. It's also up there where the stars are. Because he's everywhere. Moving on up to Ephesians chapter 1, we got... After you believed, he said, this is Paul talking, after you believed, something happened. He said, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So when you received the Holy Ghost, God put a seal on you, sealed you. It must be to show ownership, his ownership. He owns you. When you gave yourself to him, he took you and made something else out of you. He made a child of God out of you. And he said, this is the earnest of our inheritance. That's the important part of our inheritance. Until the redemption of the purchased possession, under the praise of his glory, the earnest is a, it means a, it's a token or a foretaste of what's coming. You see, what's, the things that God's giving us right now are just a foretaste of better things that's coming. You can't go wrong by being in the, in the house of worship and just take in all the goodness that God pours out on us. He just fills us up with goodness till we can't hardly hold any more of it. Well, we can't. And we'll have to get more of it. And he's not going to give us but just so much. You know, if he gives us too much, we're just going to pass out. Paul explains he explains this by relating an ancient custom. He said a man purchased a field and, and the agreement is completed, so he carries away a portion of the field, and that's the earnest or pledge. It's legal, his legal evidence that he's got it. Well, Jesus, two ways of going at that, he purchased us, <laughs> and we belong to him. That's why we belong to him, because he purchased. He, he, he does things legally in the Bible. 
Now, when Jesus comes again for the church, we have a legal right to the rest of our inheritance. For after we believed in Christ, we were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So we're all sealed up, waiting for the Lord to come. We're ready to go. What can you do now? Stay ready. Don't back off. Don't back off on what God's given you. See, the Spirit-filled believer gets a glimpse of heaven and its glories, the holiness of God. When you see, see the holiness of God manifested, that's God. He, God's holy. That holiness is on Him. And we've received a portion of it. We could never take all of it, but when you come to Jesus Christ, who is holy and fills you with the Holy Ghost, then you've got a portion of God there and we worship in spirit and in truth to be sure it's the right place to worship. And we stand on holy ground. Your whole life has changed. You're in a different predicament now. God's put you where you can walk with him and enjoy all the, 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 the essence that God has given you in the church and the worship. This will never get old. You might get tired of doing it physically, but it won't get old. It's always going to be here to worship. And through the Spirit, we have entered. Get ready for this one because you're going to use it. You've entered a supernatural life. That's more than magic. That's, that's godly. That's godly power. When you got born again, you entered a supernatural life. You couldn't have got that anywhere else. There's nothing to compare with that supernatural life that God has given to us. The supernatural is now natural to us. It just seems natural to come here, sing and shout and pray for people and, and, and do the things that Christians do. It just seems natural to us, but it's supernatural because you can't do it without God. You just got to have God to do this. You got to have the Holy Ghost working in you. Praise God. So the Holy Ghost opens to us another dimension of the Holy Ghost, of life, rather. Life in the Holy Ghost. I didn't realize earlier that how many things that God has done for us and is doing with us that we have to learn about and enjoy what, it, what is given us. Our whole life is permeated by the Holy Spirit and the, and the supernatural. People like things that's supernatural. They, magicians like to show how much power they've got and the things they do that looks like magic. What I got here doesn't look a bit like magic. It's better than that. It's far beyond magic. This is the Spirit of God moving in people. He enables, God gives gifts unto men, the Bible says. Men and women too, you're included. <laughs> Through the Holy Spirit, He gives people gifts. So you see beautiful singers and you see beautiful musicians and all the talents that come into the church. The Holy Ghost does that. And if you had some talent before that, you're going to have more now because the Holy Ghost moves in a person. And when that moves in you, it somehow enables you to do something you couldn't do before. We're talking about, we're right on the edge of heaven. The rapture's almost ready to happen. We're getting ready to go. We might need this gift up. We Take it with you. You're going up. Our whole life is permeated by the Holy Ghost and the supernatural. In some of our natural experiences, we perceive a supernatural essence such as protection, provision, deliverance, and a lot of things you can't put words on that, that, that God does because we're in his church now. We're in the body of Christ. And, and, and all these things are, are going on with us. So when we preach in the Spirit, there's a supernatural aspect to it. The, the word that I'm bringing to you is, it's not my word. And I couldn't say, any, say it any better than the, the Lord did. And he's got things there that's very enlightening. But the church chiefly are the ones that get it. 
They want it. The world doesn't want that. In everyday life, we're led by the Spirit. If you're going to live for God, you need the Holy Ghost. You have to be led by the Spirit to go where where you're supposed to go. And the last place you go, that's heaven. (laughs) And He leads us. See, I, I don't know the way. He'll lead you. He'll take you. The book of Acts is full of believers walking in the Spirit. That doesn't mean we're walking around, don't, can't see anything, and just feeling our way along. No. The Holy Ghost is leading you in a good, solid walk. you got both feet on the ground. You're, you're, you're walking where God wants you to walk. The book of Acts is full of believers. That's one good thing. Now that I'd say today the church all over this world is full of believers walking in the Spirit. Now, if you're new to the church, walking in the Spirit doesn't mean you go around in, a, in some kind of a gaze and don't know anything. It's not what that means. That simply means you've received the Holy Ghost and He's in you and you're walking now. And He's leading you and showing you where you've got to walk. The book of Acts is full of believers. Some think there's not many people in the church. This book says there are a lot of people in the church. It's full of believers. Praying in the Spirit. Best way to pray is in the Spirit. Because the Holy Ghost is foreseeing or overseeing that and helping you to pray. And then living in the Spirit... Once you receive the Holy Ghost, you can do that. You can't do it until you receive the Holy Ghost. Performing miracles in the Spirit. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you've got the power of miracles within you, and it just takes faith to set it off and stay in God's will, of course, as you do it. In Acts 19, in Ephesus, Paul ministered, as Paul ministered, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. In other words, he he was performing miracles already in his ministry all through the book. And now, when he gets to chapter 19 of Acts, it's it's special special, uh, miracles. So that's better than the other miracle. Bigger and better. There's no end to what God can do in the form of miracles. Some of us would never be able to handle what Paul did. But God gave it to him. And the church was accustomed to miracles. But these were special miracles here. So when one thought it couldn't get any better, the Lord made it better. Don't undersell God. As good as it is right now and as much as you like it, it can be better. That's not scolding. That's not uh, rejecting what God's given. It's just... God can even do better than that, and He will. The church was accustomed to miracles in that day, and these were special miracles that Paul had. So when one thought it couldn't get any better, the Lord made it better. So we take some miracles for granted and don't even call them miracles. We're guilty of that in our day and time. Such as, If you had never heard anybody speak in tongues and you heard someone speak in tongues fluently and if you just be having to know that language, wouldn't you think that was strange that this person could could speak fluent in that fluent language and didn't even know the language? That's, That's what happens. I've told you this before about, I think it was Brother Petractus, Years ago, I was just a little guy. I wasn't there, maybe, but I heard about it. He was a member of our church. He was Greek. And he was speaking in, in a language that he, it was his native language. Brother Mendenhall, who was up there leading the service, listened to what he said. I got it wrong. Brother Mendenhall was speaking in tongues. Lynn, brother, uh, the brother in the congregation heard him speak in tongues, and that was his native language, and he got saved because of that. 
I mean, it's a real live thing in one of our, when I was a kid. I may not have been in that building at the time, but, but I knew both of them. And that, that's, how, that's what happened. Somebody spoke in tongues, and that's, that's what tongues was for, to pass a message on. And it, it, God used that a lot of places. I've heard of missionaries with that. Uh, they'd be speaking in tongues and had never, have never learned the language. Are you getting tired? Should I quit? <laughs> okay. So we take some miracles for granted, such as tongues and speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues. Those are miracles, and some people don't even think about that being a miracle. They want to see a miracle, but there's miracles around them, and they never pay any attention to them. <laughs> To me, that, I, I would get excited to stand here and see, here's somebody I know speaking in tongues that don't know the language. But that's, that's what goes with the, the, the work that God's doing. And Peter said, we're preaching the gospel with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. This isn't just any old thing. Whoever's preaching it, it's, uh, it's sent down from heaven, and they got it. Okay, I want to switch gears here to, to go to something else. Uh, I've told probably about most of you here about this. Sister Christine Miller. Sister Christine Miller was in our first building with us in the church. And... Uh, she lived long enough, I became her pastor. When I was her pastor, I uh, just once in a while I'd run over and see her. You know, she has her, had her apartment. But Sister Miller and my Aunt Maggie, in the same neighborhood, they'd have prayer meetings. She'd go to people's houses and minister. It's the kind of person she was. Sister Miller, the way she spoke in tongues, you'd know her, you'd know her if you saw it, heard it. But one day, she fell in the tub there at home. Now, she was very old at this time. I just hadn't heard about it, but I was on my way. I thought I'd run, to see, run over and see Sister Miller today, pray with her. She was a prayer warrior, if anyone was. And uh, when I got there, I heard her crying at the top of her voice, praying. And the door was locked. I couldn't get in to see about her. I had to send downstairs to the office in this apartment and, and get them to come up and, and, and get in there. But God spared her. She, she come through that. She was injured a little bit, but speaking in tongues at the top of her voice. I guess the people in the house wonder what's, what's going on with that lady. God had a hold of her. God was delivering her. She was crying out when I arrived, and, and uh, she was set free when the Lord moved on her. Now, Aunt Maggie and Sister Miller, they've both gone to be with the Lord now. So I come from a long way back. But these are two faithful women praying and going to houses and praying. That's what we need today about praying. Both of them have gone to be with the Lord. And uh, God delivered me. It was not a coincidence that I was there. It's just God led me there. It was time to take care of her. Yeah. When my mother had cancer, no, she, she died with cancer, but long before that, she had another cancer that she didn't die from. But they were going to uh, watch her till they could see what, what, what kind of medicine to give her, that she would recover from that. And they never found it. But God healed her. And there was no more reason to get, get medicine. God delivered her from that cancer. But sometimes she lived after that. 
before the first treatment they gave her. They were going to give her treatments with the cancer, but they didn't need the treatment. The invisible spirit of the Lord was there working. See, you don't see God working. You just see some things he does. Well, Paul said, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. The person who does will sometimes have experiences that call for the Spirit of God to come to the aid of one of His people. God is he's emphatic about us praying for one another. He wants me to pray for you folks. He wants you to pray for me. Even if we're not hurting, pray for God bless him real good. <laughs> I don't have to be hurting to be prayed for. I may need it tomorrow. Let me get some of them stored up a bit. Several years ago, here's another thing to end with. Sister Coleman and I lay sleeping peacefully in our bed. It was about 5 o'clock in the morning, and a man crawled into our home through the kitchen window. And he procured a knife from the drawer, a big, long knife, it was about 17 inches long, which he used for a weapon. And he entered our bedroom and woke us up. And he said, I want your money and your car keys. Well, I was looking at that knife. I'd be willing to give him the money for it. <laughs> the problem was I only had a dollar and something. <laughs> so I was going to have to go a different avenue. <laughs> and uh, it made him mad. He threw the dollar or something I gave him. He threw it down and, and said, I've got to have more than this. I'm going to leave. I just left my wife and I'm leaving. But my wife sat up in bed, pulled a cover up over and said, let him help you. He's a pastor. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> He had had some kind of religious experience out in the world and didn't go far with it, but he uh, almost fell. He just got down on his face and started praying, asking God to forgive him. He delivered us. We got him up, put him up in a motel, fed him. Wouldn't you like to be captured by somebody like that? <laughs> Now, eventually, he went on out to some other state, but uh, that's how good God is. I'm running out of stuff to say here. <laughs> he was stricken with fear of God and fell down on his knees and at the foot of the bed, repenting and crying, asked God for forgiveness. That's, that's the way to win a battle. If the Lord's just going to do it that way, I'm fine with that. That was a supernatural act of God that we weren't injured or robbed or killed. And the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Keep that promise with you. He delivereth them. God's going to deliver you if you need to be delivered. The Spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for, as we ought, the Word says. And there is no end to the problems that people face during our earthly pilgrimage. Many of the problems that people encounter seem to be greater than our ability to solve them. So the Spirit helps us. The Spirit helps us pray. Remember that. Start praying in the Holy Ghost. The Spirit knows the problems. As we pray in the Spirit, He helps our infirmities. And the Bible says He makes intercession for us with groanings which can't be uttered. And that's when we're really getting into prayer. Start groaning and praying. That's, you're getting someplace when you feel that. That's the Holy Ghost praying in us. That's praying supernaturally. The Holy Ghost is making intercession for us and for someone else. This praying transcends our natural understanding. Some things are only brought to pass 
through the prayers of saints because God works through people. And in closing, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Don't be natural anymore. I'm just going to sit here and eat and try to be natural. Don't, no, no. You, you don't want to be natural now. We've received the Spirit, which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. We've been given some things. And that's one reason. One should receive the Holy Ghost that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Would you stand? I'm so glad that the presence of the Lord is rich and real here in this church. You want to pray more you want, or you want to just pray, be dismissed? Let's pray. All right, everybody pray. Father, we're thankful for your presence here tonight. We just pray, Lord, that you'll lead us as we go. Help us to live the life and walk the walk and be an example to people around us that whatever comes, Lord, we're going to be delivered by you and, and used by you. We just want to be in the place that you can use us. We thank you for the blessing of the service in whole tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody shake hands and love each other.